In this video, I want to uh, just take a minute to explain the um, participation activity 3.6.1. Uh, in this chapter, we're converting a finite state machine to a circuit, and your book does an excellent job of going step by step and showing you how to do that in this participation activity. But I want to go ahead and do another example just so you can see uh, how that might work. So I have another finite state machine, it's slightly different from the one in the example, and what I would um, start with is first analyze the finite state machine understanding that there are one, two, three states labeled M, N, P. Uh, your initial state is indicated by this arrow here. So let's fill in the initial state value of M. Our input is uh, indicated by the value on the transition line and we have a variable A representing our input. Our output is the state action and the state action is associated with this variable here, s. So you can see there's one per state. So output s. So that's the information we have so far on our state machine. Um, now, the next thing you should do is give each state a bit encoding. Sometimes this is done already for you uh, in the participation activity. They walk you through how to do that. When you have three or four states, you need to use two bits for the encoding. And how do I know that? Well, let me just walk you through how this works, right? So in state M, we'd make our encoding 0, 0. In state N, 0, 1. And in state P, 1, 0. Why the two bits per state? Because in binary, 0, 0, it converts to a 0 in decimal. Binary 0, 1 converts to a 1 in decimal. A 1, 0 converts to a 2 in decimal. And a 1, 1 converts to a 3 in decimal. So you can have up to four states with two. And again, you're just numbering the states essentially. But it needs to store two bits. So uh, the other thing we need to know about this state machine is that 1, 1 is not used. There is no fourth state, and that's okay. It is okay to have that situation. Um, the next step in the process will then be to fill in our truth table. Begin with the left-hand side of your truth table. The left-hand side of your truth table represents your present states. So you have a present state 1 column that represents the left bit. A present state zero column represents the right bit and your input variable A. The right hand columns on your truth table represent the next state. Again, next state one represents the left bit, next state zero represents the right bit, and your output, external output is S. You may have more, we've seen situations where that is the case, uh, and then you would just have a column per output. The next step then would be to fill in your truth table as you have done in the past. So just go ahead and fill in based on our pattern for numbering from 0 to 7. And I'm going to pause here because I don't think you want to watch me. The next thing I want to do is in my truth table indicate the state name that I'm using and it's just simply for purposes of cross-reference, right? It's easier for you to just remember where you are. So again, present state 1, present state 0 bits, 0, 0 is state M. Uh, 0, 1 is the next two rows, that's state N. 1, 0, state P, and 1, 1 is unused, so just indicate that here. Now let's um, fill in the right-hand columns, and the easiest way to do that is to begin with your output S. The reason for that is because S is dependent on your present state value. It has nothing to do with next state, so if you start filling this in first, it just gets confusing. Uh, so begin with um, examining, again, your present state, 0, 0, what's the value of S? S is 0. Present state is still 0, 0 on the next row. Again, S is 0. 
present state is now 0, 1. Look at 0, 1. Your S is a 1. Same for the next row. Present state 1, 0. S is a 1. Same for the next row. On the unused states, your book, your Xi book, fills in a 0. You could also put in an X to indicate unused. Okay. Now let's fill in our next states. So from state 0, 0, if our input A is equal to 0, what, what is our next state? So present state 0, 0, input A is a 0. I can see we're going to stay in state 0, 0. So next state 1 is a 0, next state 0, 0. Ne uh, present state 0, 0 with an input value of 1 for A. So present state 0, 0. A is a 1. I'm going to transition to 0, 1. So fill in your 0, 1. Present state 0, 1 with a value of 0 for A. You stay in the current state. So you can see what the pattern is here. Oops. Now you have state 0, 1 with a value of 1 for A. So 0, 1 value of 1 for A, we transition to 1, 0. 1 for N1, 0 for N0. 1, 0 with a value of 0. So 1, 0, value of 0, stay in 1, 0. 1, 0 with a value of 1 for A transitions us back to 0, 0. Okay, and again, the next two rows are unused. So you indicate that by an X or a 0. Okay, and your truth table is filled in. So the next step will be to create your equations for N1, N0, and S. And why do we do that? We do that because in order to draw the circuit, your combinational logic that feeds into your register is determined by your next states and your outputs. So begin with column N1. Wherever there's a 1, create the min term. Okay, so uh, my first min term here is going to be N1 equal to P1 prime P0A plus the next min term is here. P1, P0, A prime. Okay, now do this for N0 and do this for S. So I'm going to pause. Now that you have your equations, you need to uh, simplify them before you draw your circuit. Um, and there's just something I want to draw your attention to. So what I would start with is a K-map. I mean, you could use um, the just Boolean algebra laws and rules to simplify, uh, but a K-map is so simple. And I want to draw your attention to these unused X's because you can work them to your advantage. So uh, the first thing I would do is so I draw the I drew this table to represent our K-map. And here P1 uh, is true, and here P1 prime, and then I have, you know, A prime here, A in these two columns, A prime, and P0 true here, uh, P0 prime, P0 prime. So hopefully you can kind of make some sense of what I've tried to do here um, using Word. Uh, so take uh, the N1 column, find your... Um, your min terms, once you have your min terms, take these and apply them to your K map. So P1 prime, P0, and A will be, let's see if I have this right here. Uh, and then P1, P0 prime, A prime. So P0 prime is here, A prime here, and P1. So right there. So this helps us not at all. But now, use your unused X's. These are called don't cares, and I believe we've talked about these before. So now, you can plot your don't cares, and your don't cares are going to be P1, P0, A prime. So P1, 
P0, A prime, that will be here. P1, P0, A. Here. This changes things. Uh, this helps you now. So what do we do about this? So go ahead and draw your circles. I'm going to try to do that here. I'm going to pause so you don't have to watch me painfully go through drawing. Okay, so I went ahead and created my circles. I can circle these two adjacent ones, uh, and I can circle these two adjacent ones. Uh, here is my final equation for N1. Uh, P0A, so that one is right here, and you can see very clearly this value is P0, this value is P0. A and A, the value for P1 changes, P1, P1 prime. Uh, and then this term is P1 A prime. And again, I'm not going to go through and explain. Um, but now we have a finalized equation for N1. I'm going to go through and continue simplifying N0 and S. Uh, and then in the next video, I'll show you how to draw the circuit using Cedar logic.